Hello, and welcome back to Thoughts Fittings. You're a prick. Hello, and welcome back to Thoughts Fittings Motions. I'm your host, Dan Well. I'm joined with you, as always, by our prick of a co host, Danny Fankham. What up, everybody? How's it going? I'm having fun. Uh, I'm not. For anyone who doesn't know, if Dan's edited this out, I clapped when he was trying to do the intro. <laughs> <laughs> and it completely threw him off. So. It I is. had fun. Anyway, let's start the podcast off with what the F have you been up to? What have you done the past week you would recommend? Uh, well, our review of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode 4 will be up by the time this episode comes out. So go check that out if you want to hear our thoughts on Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode 4. Uh, and apart from that, I have not yet watched the latest episode of Invincible. Uh, I'm a little bit behind on that. But I have watched season 2 of Be the Beginning... And it's all right. That's, that's I, good. All right is good. <laughs> well, I kind of regret not going back and watching the first season because I kind of forgot all the characters and what had happened. Ah. Um, and this one relies heavily on you knowing who the characters are and what happened in the last season. Also, it's a very much a set up for a season three because it's only like six episodes and the last season was uh, 12 episodes. So it's, it goes by quite quickly. It's about three hours or two hours of your time, really. Um, but no, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'd recommend you watch the first season and the second season, and then you'd probably get more of an idea back to back. It's not that long. It's about, I'd say, maybe five hours of television in total. But no, I'd recommend it. It's um, basically about a kid who can grow a sword through his arm, and he goes around slashing people, and he's been experimented. Like It's a, it's a whole plot. There's a detective. There's a lot going on. Well, talk about the sword through the arm. I, I started watching uh, New Mutants. Uh, this past oh, week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'll review, we did a review that. Episode on that. Uh, yeah, last that will also TV be out. So you go check that out. Yeah. Uh, surprising reactions from both of us, I think. Yeah. But that's all I've done this week. Because <laughs> I've been busy. Playing golf mainly. I did, I did actually get a hole in one. So. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Golf clap, everyone. Golf clap. Thank you. Um. But yeah. Moving right along. Yeah. Let's Damn, go on what's to next? Why does this exist? Today you put forward something. Yeah, um, you can now buy SpongeBob SquarePants meme collectible toys. Yeah. Have you ever dreamed of owning a real figurine of SpongeBob naked next to a rock being puffed out? What? Uh, a, a dabbing Squidward? What? A surprised Patrick? An imagination SpongeBob or handsome Squidward or mocking SpongeBob toy? Well, now you can for money. Um. It seems These... a bit um, strange to me. Yep, but they exist. And they're on Amazon. You can buy them. Are you going to buy one? No, because I don't love Spongebob that much. The r- memes kind of ruined Spongebob for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I, I, yeah. Some of the memes are funny, but a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are just bad. And Spongebob, whilst a good show in general, the memes have kind of ruined the show for me. And also it's for kids, so I don't care. I'm not buying these. It seems very expensive. I mean, one's $35. That's the most expensive one. It's a mocking SpongeBob one. Yeah. I I would be surprised. I think people will buy these. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm... People buy loads of stupid things. Yeah. But, hey, if you want them, go for it. That You can now buy memes that are in real life on a little statue, a little figurine. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you've got money to spare, sure. But, I mean, there's, there's many other things you buy for that money. Yeah, now you can, when your friends say, do you remember that meme? You can show them your action figure and go, I have this meme immortalized in real plastic. A dinosaur died so that I could do this. Poor, poor um, dinosaur. Could be intended for that. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, if you like SpongeBob and you want them, they're on Amazon, available for purchase. Officially licensed as well. Oh, Not... oh wow. That's even more ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, but, um, uh, w- w- yeah, if you want one, go get one. Anyway, let's go on to stream that movie news into my head. And our first topic of the week is Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone will not return for Creed 3. Yep, he's um, said before that he's officially retiring the character, and so he won't return for Creed 3, which, fair enough. I don't think there's much for his character to do. I mean, I never saw the first two. I've watched both of them. I enjoyed them immensely. I haven't watched any of the other Rocky films, but I did enjoy Michael B. Jordan's version of it. Uh, Wait, is Creed based in... on Rocky then? Yeah, it's a continuation. It's Rocky Balboa, but old, but there's an, oh. uh, 
It's um Apollo Creed's son is Michael B. Jordan. So the guy who it, it Rock, seems a bit uh, much. <laughs> the guy who the Russian kills in I think Rocky Four is the son, and then the second film is uh the Russian guy um son fighting Apollo Creed's son. So. But the first one is him just trying to get like into the boxing world as like number one heavyweight champion or whatever it is. They're enjoyable films. I enjoyed them quite immensely. I feel like there's uh, too many Rocky and Creed films. There's yeah, no eight. But there's what? There's no eight with that the third one. Yeah, but there's 23, 24 Marvel things. There's, you but can have Marvel's long lasting for different. It's not just a boxing fight every single film. Yeah, but people like it. Fair enough. If you people keep they had a doing robot it. in one of them. What? There's a robot maid or whatever it is in one of them. What's it's happening? Like a... I thought it was like a Down to Earth Rocky film. No, that they have they, in one of them. I can't remember which one. I think it's. A, I think it might be four. The, Rocky, because he's so rich because of boxing, he has a robot butler. That's ridiculous. And it's like one of the dumbest looking robots. That's and they're almost like campaigning for the robot to return in one of the Creed movies if he was going to do another. People Whoa. are strange, Dan. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. But yeah, I look forward to Rocky Free because I think Michael B. Jordan's actually going to direct it as well. Star and direct. So, Well, maybe it'd be good. I'll, um, I won't watch it. I'll probably watch it and I'll give you a thoughts because I've watched the other two and I enjoyed both of them Fair quite enough. A I, yeah. All right, let's go into some Marvel news because we mentioned Marvel. Uh, the, mm. the first one being a Deadpool R-rated anime, animated series is reportedly in the works and it's going to be starring Ryan Reynolds as the main character. Yeah, for Hulu. So not Disney+. Plus. Well, there will probably be Disney Plus in the UK. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- there was already a animated Deadpool R-rated series already produced or being in- produced by um, Childish Gambino. Um, fucking, what's his name? Uh, fucking really famous dude. Why can't I fucking remember his name? Uh, Donald Glover. That's the one. Thank you. Why did you make me suffer for so long? <laughs> Donald Glover. <laughs> Um, yeah, Donald Glover. There was already one in the works with him, uh, but that got canned once, because that was at Fox, and then once the Disney-Fox merger happened, that got cancelled. So, maybe this is the remnants of this, but I think Donald Glover was meant to voice, um, Deadpool, so maybe they've, now that they've got Ryan Reynolds under contract for however many movies, they might use his voice for this. I'm sure Ryan Reynolds would love to do it. He loves the character. Yeah. I, I was just looking for because I, I saw the um screenshots or, or like the mock-ups of what the uh old project was going to be, and it looked good. It looked similar to like Harley Quinn. And that's yeah. what I was going to imagine it was going to be like. Yeah, it looked very much like that, but this was before Harley Quinn came out, so this would have been like the precedent of what R-rated animated like violent stuff could have been. And now everything's R-rated and violent. I mean, I, yeah, I do love a nice uh, R-rated uh, TV show of a. Uh, um... I made sure. Yeah, I mean, if this is gonna happen, I'm look. I'm probably gonna watch it at some stage if it comes to Disney Plus. Oh, I'll definitely watch it. Yeah, hopefully it's it might tie into the movies if Marvel and everything are doing that, and this might be the explanation of how the X Men come in because everything now is how the X Men are gonna come into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, I mean, I it still... would just be go on. It would just be an animated adventure of Deadpool going around and collecting all the mutants that people actually like and just dragging them into the fucking MCU. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. I, I, I still think X-Men are going to come through by uh, Doctor Strange 2. It's the most sensible one of doing it. Not Ant-Man and time? No, well, maybe, but multiverse. Just reset the timeline. Have Magneto suddenly be in uh, the World War 2. Well, like Flashpoint, holog- where they just change something and then all of a sudden people appear. Yeah, Um. but uh, enough about Deadpool. Let's move on to more Deadpool. Yeah, uh- so- <laughs> Some guy has made the entire Deadpool movie in Lego. And I watched it. You watched and the whole film? Been... Yep, I watched the entire thing. Because I was curious to see what it was like. Um, yeah, so a guy called Huckle... Huckley Berg Studios uh, has recreated every scene uh, in Deadpool 1, the first one, in Lego. And it is actually surprisingly good, like recreation. He's got little fun Easter eggs where some stuff he couldn't do, he had to replace with like little ink joke gags and stuff where uh, signs and everything aren't actual signs in the movie, but they have little fun Easter eggs. I mean, I'm uh, watching it this... right now. Uh, just skipping through it. It's pretty much spot on. Yeah, only thing weird is the lips. <laughs> yeah, you kind of can't do Lego lips, but he has like the little open and close thing when you do them. But it's it's good. I enjoyed it. It's Deadpool. If you like Deadpool and you don't want to watch Deadpool again, but you want to watch and you like Lego, 
I'd, I'd say give it a watch before it gets taken down. Yeah, it's about to get taken down for copyright, I imagine. I mean, uh, the only thing they can claim it for is the uh, audio, because otherwise it's just parody. True, it's not... not about to do it. Yeah, but I'm sure Disney at this point will be very happy. But the big campaign is for like this guy to get Ryan Reynolds' attention, So because you'd assume dead Ryan Reynolds would love this. Oh yeah, it, Ryan Reynolds, it, he's a nerd case of a man. Really. This dude, this it took this dude three years to create. Oh wow! So yeah, it took three years, and I think this is the uh, the dude's last project that he's working on because he's done a bunch of other like shot for shot. Uh, there's a Captain America Civil War airport scene in Lego uh, that has 11 million views. Um, but this, I think, this is the dude's last project as well. I think he was c- gonna end it all here, from what I can read in the comments from the people who have like. Well, that's this. a nice thing, I suppose. Yeah. Um. Fucking give him a watch because it's. It's generally impressive how much of the movie he managed to recreate with Lego. And it's still basically the same movie, so if you enjoyed it, it it's pretty much good. Although, he doesn't do the end credit scenes, so... Oh, that's so sad. All right. <laughs> Not yeah. that anyone really matters. It's a whole one hour, 41 minutes in living Lego Deadpool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that was... <laughs> It was just insane when I saw it, and I was just like, ah, fuck it, I'm bored, I have an hour and 40 minutes, I'll watch, <laughs> I'll, I'll watch it, because I was like, I- I've been craving watching Deadpool again, but I didn't want to go back and watch Deadpool, so I went and watched this. I suppose it works. It, yeah, it, it's the same audio, it's just different visuals, and it works. But yeah, go check them out. Um, it's, it's, I already said the name, go go back in time and watch that. Huckley Berg Studios, I think. Yeah, Huckley yeah. Berg Studio. Or Huxley Berg Studios, H-U-X-L-E-Y. B E R G S T U D I O S. Yeah, and uh, give Ryan Reynolds a tag on Twitter or something, and get him get him to watch this. Yes, yeah. I'm sure he'll put this kid in or whoever made this in Deadpool three if he can. And talking about recreation, uh, Disneyland has now recreated the Avengers Campus, and it's going to have an opening date soon. Yeah, so June fourth, twenty twenty one, Disney California Adventure, the Disneyland Avengers Camp is opening. So this is basically similar to Star Wars and everything else. This is their heavy buy our merch, have some fun walking around like stuff from the MCU universe. Yeah, and of course it's not just the Avengers compound. They've also got like um, Spider-Man A hotel. and Doctor Strange temples. Yeah, and Tom Holland will reprise his role as Peter Parker for the ride where attendees can strap on web bracelets and interact with 3D attractions. These are like the big full on, uh, there's a PIM test kitchen with Ant-Man themed food. There's um a Doctor Strange uh train, Ancient Sanctum where Doctor Strange will train result uh recruits in the Mystic Arts. Um Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout Ride. There's a lot of stuff here for Marvel fans. Isn't it quite cool to be fair? Oh yeah, this is the thing that uh, would make me go to Disneyland. Yeah. Would... <laughs> like Same. I I I have no interest in Disney properties except for like Marvel and like to go to a theme park based on kids stuff without a kid is creepy to me. Um but this I'd probably go just to have some fun but I'm sure it's fucking expensive as all hell. Oh yeah, it's going to be like 100 quid a ticket probably. Oh no, cuz I saw I saw the the Star Wars like uh campus or whatever it is in America is like six hundred quid per person. That's ridiculous amount of money. For how Plus, many days? Inc- one day, like a like a couple days. Like that's so couple. much money. It's it's so expensive to go. Um, and like that's not including flights or anything. I don't think that's so, just stupid. Yeah, but I mean, if you're a diehard fan, you gotta go. <laughs> get that get that Star Wars lightsaber that they charge you money still for. You don't get that included in your payments. Well, carrying on with Marvel, uh, Marvel has just released the Loki trailer. Yep. Uh, lots of fun stuff in there. I love um, this trailer. Yeah, it's a very interesting trailer. There's a cat in it. Yeah. It, it looks. I also love the music look- as well. Mm. But we get a bit more of what the plot's going to be. So basically, Loki's been recruited by the time organization people to fix the mistakes that he's caused by taking the Tesseract in Endgame. Yeah. So basically, there's, there's like gonna be one main timeline, which is the one we experienced in uh, Avengers Endgame, or just entire Marvel. And now this has become yeah. a Loki variant, and he's got a variant on his jacket to signify he's the variant. He's not the actual Loki. Mm. Um, but there's a. I think what it what it showed in the trailer is there's like thirteen different branching timelines from the result of him taking the Tesseract in Endgame. I did not count that. Well, there's a little bit where it's just like a diagram or something, and it shows like when he takes the Tesseract and then the branching paths off. 
Yeah. So it looks like, and I think someone counted it as like 13 different branching paths. So we may get 13 different time. I don't know how many episodes. I think this is six episodes. I don't think there'd be 13. I thought like that's just like, saying there's more than one Pokemon off timeline. Yeah, I'm sure people are digging way too into this, but there's a hundred, there's loads of little Easter eggs in it. Like people are speculating that the cat in it is a Flurkin from Captain Marvel. It might be. Why would Loki? Why would Loki be scared of it? Because he looks like quizzical at it, and the cat's kind of doing like weird shit. I think it looks like it's moving backwards in time, from what I saw. But yeah, trailers are a plenty this week. Yeah, with Space Jam: A New Legacy. I mean, Uh, I know you. God, so thrilled to see this one. It's Ready Player One, but also owned by Warner Brothers, so it's every property just dumped into, and it looks like the worst fucking movie imaginable. It looks terrible. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with the CGI characters. I just have a problem with this movie in general, because it looks bad. It does look just terrible. I don't want to watch it. The plot line looks awful. Oh, yeah, so basically the plot line is his kid gets sucked into a virtual world, Spider-verse. and then... And Ready Player One, because it's just, it's just all properties. So you get Game of Thrones, you get uh, Clockwork Orange for some reason, even though they were like, we don't want to have Pepe Le Pew because he's a rapist. And then you get Clockwork Orange, which is full of rapists. Um, Wait, Pepe Le Pew's a race is a racist. Rapist. A ra- How is he a rapist? Because he basically sexually assaults a cat that doesn't want anything to do with him. And he's just trying to fuck it every time. Well, the raccoon. No, the the skunk. skunk. That's one. Yeah, the skunk. I'm, I'm, I'm unaware of this. Yeah. Every, well, every plot line in a Pepe Le Pew thing is he goes and tries to fuck a cat that doesn't want anything to do with him because the cat's got a white stripe on it. And he just oh. basically sexually, like, tries to kiss the cat and fucking, and the cat doesn't want it. <laughs> like, the whole point of that <laughs> is the cat doesn't want it. Oh, dear. And then, yeah. Pepe Le Pew got cancelled, Dan. Were you not aware? I was unaware of this. I was unaware of the cancel culture behind Pepe Le Pew. Yeah. But that's the whole point of Pepe Le Pew's character in those cartoons was just cat gets a white stripe on its back and then Pepe Le Pew's a French rapist who wants to go fuck that cat. And the cat don't want it. And the cat's trying to get away all the time. And he's just taking... He's not taking no for an answer. So Pepe Le Pew got cancelled, but they have Clockwork Orange characters in it who rape people in that movie. So, you know... Swings and roundabouts for cancel culture. Yeah, I mean, okay. Yeah. Uh, the this, trailer looks this bad, movie, though. <laughs> yeah, this movie looks bad. Also, there's a cut scene with Pepe Le Pew that apparently was um him dealing with the rape allegations or something, but they cut it because they didn't think it was appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, this movie just looks bad. I don't know. Space Jam 1 is terrible anyway. People have a nostalgic taste for it, but it's not a good movie. Yeah. So this one just looks even worse. And I don't like this. I don't like whoever's LeBron James. I don't think he looks, he's good in this. He can't act. And if it's all based around him, you need someone acting. But at least, um, fucking guy, uh, fuck, what's, what's the fucking name? Um, uh, Rhodey from Iron Man. And Don Marvel. Cheadle. Don Cheadle, uh, is having fun chewing scenery. Being he's a always bad guy. Uh, chewing scenery somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, Dan. We're going to talk about Black Widow, or you are, because I haven't watched this and I'm refusing to watch it because I don't want anything like more than what I've already seen from prior ones. So you have all of the talking points and I'm going to take off my headphones so I can't hear. Have fun. Okay, so there really isn't that much to it, if I'm honest. It's like the same as you've seen in previous trailers. Um, there isn't a lot to go on about it. Uh, you've got, you know, the um, the guy from... Oh, I can't remember his name. I'm changing things. The guy that's like hairy and died, but... Yeah, I don't I mean, what to say much more about it, really. It's just like every other trailer. Very dramatic. Probably going to get cancelled. Won't be surprised. But, yeah. Uh, a bit more Taskmaster as well. He's back in there occasionally. I mean, that'd be good to see him. But the, most of the plot is still kind of hidden, but we'll wait and see. And I will get Danny to put his headphones back on. Hello, everyone. I'm back. How was that? Was that awkward for you? I was really awkward. I was not expecting that. And I was like, um, okay. I'm glad. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> Don't do that to me ever again. <laughs> well, hopefully there won't be any more trailers and by, before, but there will be. So I'm I'm basically black like blacklisting. I don't want to watch anything because trailers always give away shit. And I'm just I always watch the first one and then I'll never watch the second ones after because I'm just like eh. I don't need I don't need more of the plot revealed. I'm already going to watch this movie. Why have it all spoiled? Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, the next trailer that we're going to talk about is mainstream. Uh, with 
which stars Andrew Garfield and Mayor Hawk, um, and is basically what it's like to be an influencer in the modern day, uh, where Andrew Garfield's like a sociopathic man trying to be the entertainer of the world on like YouTube and shit. I haven't actually seen the trailer yet. I've just I've started skimming through it now. It yeah, seems a bit it... um cringy. <laughs> Yeah, but it's meant it's like it's got a sinister thing if you actually watch it. Like there's an actual sinister because it's like, um, is this dude a sociopath and is just pretending to be like happy and cheery? And it... also, the only thing that I don't like about this trailer is that Jake Paul is in it. Oh, for goodness' so, sake! Why is Jake Paul in it? No one wants to see Jake Paul because it's basically mocking Jake Paul. So I guess <laughs> they had to get. <laughs> it is. It's basically that Jake Paul level of like person who presents himself to be this and then is actually someone much worse and i think i might watch this if it comes out at any point but yeah mainstream i just thought it looked interesting because also andrew garfield is like very charismatic in it but yeah i think mainly because i was just like hey andrew garfield's like famous so why not and then i just saw this and i was just oh he's doing something different he's being like a sociopathic weirdo but everyone loves him because he's on youtube and stuff I mean, so, maybe. It looks good from what I can see. If you want to check it out, the trailer's on YouTube at the moment. And I don't know when this film comes out. It's just been announced, I guess. Um, yeah, I thought it looked interesting. Fair enough. I, yeah, we'll wait and see. And I probably won't go soon to watch it, but I will I watch it. I think this probably goes straight to VOD. Or like, uh, maybe. Prob- yeah, why not? Uh, moving on. Uh, so in casting news, uh, Nick Offerman, uh, will star alongside Lily James, Sebastian Stan, and Seth Rogen in the Hulu limited, uh, series for the theft and release of Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee's sex tape. Right. So what is this? <laughs> because I'm confused now by reading the headline. So Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee have had a sex tape release ages ago, and I'm guessing Hulu has now just gone, Hey, look, why don't we make a series about this? This feels like they're running out of ideas. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I think of several it was reasons. A very... Why not to? Yeah, it would be fine. It just, I just thought the headline was funny because they're making a like series based on the sex tape of Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee. Yeah, I'm already confused. But it's got, well, yeah, Pam Anderson was Baywatch. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. I know who she is. Yeah. Yeah, and then also in Borat. Yes, she is in the first Borat. She's yes. the desire of Borat in the first Borat. But th- I think he also watches her sex tape. I can't remember in that film. <laughs> But um, yeah, th- th- this was a thing that happened ages ago, and now they're going to do a limited TV series on it. But it's got some big name actors, so I was just like, "This is interesting" because all these big name actors are on it, mm. like Sebastian Stan and Seth Rogen and Nick Offerman and everything, and Lily James are big name actors and actresses. So I was just like, "Well, funny, funny headline, big name stars. This will be interesting to see." And this was going to Hulu, so we might see it on Disney Plus at some stage in the UK. So here's a question. Were you? Did you think the writing in um, Justice League was bad? Uh, or Man of Steel or Batman v Superman? Rise of Skywalker. Man of Steel wasn't Chris Terry, but oh, not, not Man of Steel. It was Batman v Superman, Justice League, and Rise of Skywalker. Oh yeah, thanks, thanks for ruining my joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I didn't think the writing was good, but it might not be the screenwriter's fault. Shocker. Um, well, except maybe Rise of Skywalker, but. <laughs> For um, Batman v Superman, uh, Chris Terrio has come out and basically scathed uh, Warner Brothers for its treatment of his scripts in Batman v Superman and Justice League, stating that a lot of the decisions to make the film how it was weren't his, and he had a not he had he had a very close relationship with Zack Snyder um, in like whatnot and the cast and everything. But Warner Brothers kept going, hey, look, your script's too long. Cut it down. We don't want it this dark. We want, or we want it darker, even. Oh, Cause wow. He, yeah, because he, um, I read all this article, um, but it was basically, you know how Batman's branding people at the beginning yeah, yeah, of the film? Yeah. He, he had to step in and tell Warner Brothers to not have Batman brand, um, Jesse Eisenberg's left Luthor at the end because it means that there's been no progress to show Batman's not as like you can have Batman at the beginning be like a sociopathic brander but then if he ends the film at the exact same point because he brands Lex Luthor then he's not changed no. and he had to step in and go look don't have him brand Lex Luthor at the end because otherwise people won't be happy because he's had no character progression and that he's not he's meant to be like lightening up like Batman v Superman is meant to be the turning point in his life where he has switched from dark, grim hero who kill, uh, like beats up people and brands them 
to like the symbol of hope who tries to bring back uh, superman back from the dead basically yeah i mean no. i'm not surprised it's one brothers fault it a lot of what happened with Pomer DCEU seems like Warner Brothers. Yeah. Um, but this article is very interesting in depth to what he um, had to go through. He like purposely tried to get his name removed from Justice League, the first version. Yeah. Because he, he, he was like, they've just basically ruined my script. And as you can tell from Justice League Zack Snyder, it is a better version of the script. Um, so is the Zack were... Snyder version actually his version of the script then? Yeah, it, it's the collaboration that he did with Zack Snyder. Whether or not they would have cut cut it down to a bit more theatrical version. Well, obviously Warner then... Brothers would have probably screwed him screwed him over. Yeah, but it's more. He talks more about um, Batman v Superman and how they cut thirty minutes out of the runtime, so you get and the how it was cutting the human elements rather than cutting the CGI elements because the CGI elements take a lot more time and money to do, so they're not going to cut them. No, so no, no. the character moments where like people were talking in court about how Superman killed a bunch of people or like supposedly killed a bunch of people were all cut. Like Superman's humanity was cut a bit load and all of that. Um, and then once the... Uh, but it was more just they had no plan. It was just, we're releasing these movies, figure it out. So unlike Marvel, there was just because it was just like we're doing Man of Steel, we're doing Batman v Superman, we're doing Justice League. Wonder Woman will come out before Justice League. Aquaman will come out, but there had been no script for Wonder Woman yet, so he didn't know what Wonder Woman's character was like uh, for Batman v Superman and Justice League. He didn't know what Aquaman's character was going to be like, so he was having to write all of these characters without any like direction as to what the films prior were going to be. Like Wonder Blame Woman. Warner Brothers. This is all Warner Brothers' fault. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so yeah, basically just Warner Brothers fucking things up, and this dude's not having any of it. So, I mean, I can't be some surprised. But yeah, let's move on. And Netflix has secured a streaming deal with Sony, and all the Sony films will now be well, not exclusively to Netflix, but Netflix will have the first say in any films that they want into Netflix. Yeah, so Spider Man is going home to Netflix. Yeah. Um. Uh. And I mean. This is interesting because you would have thought Sony would do this with Marvel. Yeah, we had Disney. this discussion last night, and I think they didn't want it not because of Marvel, because of Star Wars. Yeah, I'd imagine. Um, why Star Wars? Yeah, I don't know why I they, 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 they didn't want to be put on with Star Wars. Well, what I'm trying to think what Sony has. I think they have Ghostbusters, Spider Man, James Bond. It's basically Spider Man and James Bond. <laughs> Those are the big ones. Well, yeah, um, but I mean. Netflix will pay one billion to Sony over four years. Sony can make a pay one window agreement, such as this in part because it doesn't have its own streaming service like Disney Plus or uh, HBO Max. Uh, and the deal was reportedly set to last five years. Um, but yeah, and it's it's probably going to be where you can watch Spider Man uh, Home, whatever the fucking name of the next one is. Uh, home. No way home. No way home. I kept thinking of all the other fake titles that they released. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Um, but yeah. So hey, we might. Uh, it was weird because Netflix was rumored to be buying the rights to, or like the streaming rights for um, James Bond earlier on in the pandemic. Well, apparently Sony now was they have to... got it. Yeah. So now they have the rights to pretty much anything that they want from Sony. I mean, five I mean... billion to Sony. Sony will take that. I imagine. Uh, one billion for five years. Yeah, but it's five billion total. No, it's a uh, one billion over four years. Oh, right. I thought it was one billion a year for five years. No, 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 no. I don't think Netflix. Well, I'm sure Netflix makes that money, but <laughs> I don't think they want to. Like Spider Man alone is worth a billion. No, 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 it's it's the most expensive property because like Sony uh, Sony won't sell it because it makes them so much money. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, look at the games as well. It's one. It's the most successful game, I think, exclusively. Uh, one of. That it keeps getting its title knocked down by every other PlayStation exclusive. That's true, but it was at the time when it came out. It was, yeah. But uh, Sony makes it's the font for the PlayStation Three is the Spider Man font, yeah. So, and the PlayStation like font is the Spider Man font. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so if Sony wanted to sell the rights, they'd have to basically not have the rights to the font anymore. So they'd have to change the PlayStation's design. Yeah, but um, like I said, uh, Netflix we only get this say. They get first say, and if Netflix don't want any particular film, then Sony are free to get, give that film to another streaming service like Disney Plus. Oh or... no, poor Jared Leto's Morbius movie. Oh, that no. won't ever come to Netflix. No. No, but yeah, it's, it's, it can go to anywhere else. They're allowed to go to other places. But just Netflix oh, get first. That say. means the Emoji movie is going to be fucking on Netflix at any time, and I'm going to have to fucking sit there and look well, at it. Well, maybe that Netflix every don't time. want it. 
Am I saying no? Uh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the movie news for this week. Yes. So Moving let's on. go on to the last controller of the news. Yeah. Um, and starting with an engineer made a giant Nintendo Switch for charity. And it is a big Nintendo Switch. It's a big boy. Yeah. And, I mean, why not? <laughs> it's basically just a giant screen in a massive Nintendo Switch casing. Yeah, with functional Joy-Con controllers that are big. Yeah. So, but you would, you would never use those functional Joy-Con controllers because <laughs> they're too big. I don't think they are functional because from what I can see is he's using the little Joy-Con. Yeah, that's what I thought. But, you know, you could still have the big ones be functional. It wouldn't be that hard. Yeah, because you can get coffee tables where you could get buttons that still input for things. Yeah, so, so I, might, I, wouldn't I wouldn't be, surpri- be surprised if they're functional, but you can have kind of dual functionality. Yeah, I don't know how big the screen is. It looks like maybe 40. 70 screen. inches. So it's oh, a. Uh, okay, that's a lot bigger than I thought. So as, as for the specs, 60, 650 times larger than a Switch. It weighs 65 pounds and measures at 70 inches long by 30 inches tall. Therefore, not so portable anymore unless you really want to make moving your game console the co- uh, focus of your workout yeah I mean, a dumb it's, joke it's cool i suppose yeah and the display is 4k so better than the switch <laughs> <laughs> it has to be 4k for that big yeah um but yeah that, that that's the nintendo news big big nintendo switch it is uh let's go into xbox and microsoft has added touch controls to 50 plus titles and this is to support the game pass going on mobile yeah so you can now play a 50 plus titles with touch controls if you don't want to have to carry your controller around with you yeah and but it just mean, kind of proves microsoft's next point is just going to be streaming yeah sea of thieves drag uh gears 5 dragon quest x i s killer instinct and more uh minecraft dungeons Ah, um, great game. Yeah. It's not, but... Yeah, there's a lot of games here from the article that they've spoken. So if you want to play... Oh, Hellblade Senua Sacrifice. I love that game. It fucking sucks that Microsoft bought the developers so that <laughs> this, like, the second one is exclusive to Xbox and I have to buy it on PC if I want to play it. Um, Yay, PC Master Race. Mm. Yeah, technically Xbox Master Race because they'll buy everything in the end. Yeah, because um, it's all because of PC anyway, so I get all of it. Nah, they'll buy all the PC market and then make it so you have to buy an Xbox. Yeah, they wish. Um, but yeah, that that that's all we got to say, really. 50 plus titles, if you didn't like any of them, and you have Game Pass, you can now do it with touch controls and you don't have to use a controller. True. Moving on. Um, E3 is going to return, but this time it's going to be an old digital and free to, uh, to do. Yeah. Uh, last year's was a mess because Corona and they... They tried doing E3, but it was not over a set amount of days. It was just like a constant, mu- uh, like a month of news announcements that were meant to be under E3, but no one really knew if they were under E3, and it was just kind of confusing. Um, but once again, Sony is not returning for E3, so it's got Microsoft, uh, Nintendo, EA, I think maybe a bunch of other ones, but again... Sony, not going, yeah. even though it's digital and they don't have to buy a stand. Ubisoft, Konami, Capcom, Take-Two Interactive, Warner Brothers, all, all going. But once again, Sony is stepping out and probably going to do their own thing. Yeah, I think it's also a bit of a shame because I don't think they're going to have the same kind of experience you would have in E3. In E3, you can go try out some new games sometimes. They have like free demos. From what I've seen, it's not very consumer-friendly E3. No. It's basically, because it's just a, a, it's just a te- uh, stock market thing. It's just to show the stock market uh, investors on the companies that new games will come out mm. and that they are they are going to make money. They're not just sitting around taking all their money, but they are working on stuff that will generate the money. So it's a, it's also kind of a dying industry anyway because no one really wants to go there because a lot of tech companies are pulling out. Activision pulled out. Sony's pulling out. They're all I like, think, well, we don't need to do this now. We can do our own thing for free. Yeah, and we don't have to share the headlines. Yeah. Because... It's like, oh, if I release it at E3, I have to compete against every other gaming announcement from Microsoft to Sony uh, to Nintendo to everything. And you have to bring a massive lineup or otherwise you'll get buried. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. And they're just that way. Yeah, no, I don't do this. Like a week later, once all the news has died down and your thing's not buried anymore, you could just go, hey, look, we're releasing Spider-Man 5 mm. on the PS5. But you wouldn't have to share the headlines. So, Yeah. It's fun, but I, I might tune in this time because I've never been able to actually view anything. I mean, it's free this time, so yeah, maybe they'll have like yeah. online things. Maybe that's about stream demos for games. But yeah, uh, maybe. It, but it's over three days, and it starts on June twelfth. I might so. try it. Um, so but they've weekend, also, yeah, but they've also stated that this is the only 
they will return to a venue next year. Yeah, I imagine so. They get money for it, so. Yeah, so don't worry if you do want to go. They're not always going to be digital. I think it's just for this year, and then they'll go back to, hopefully, if unless the coronavirus finally sucks and takes a massive spike and everyone's fucking... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Mainly Brazil. It is America. Brazil's got a bad situation. And talking about Brazil, Brazil authorities are to investigate loot boxes. Yeah, so loot boxes being bad is constantly in the news cycle and Brazil is, yet again, not taking any shit and probably going to pass some laws to prevent them. I mean, I hate loot boxes. They're awful. They ruin games. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised Brazil was the one with reason. <laughs> but <laughs> Of all the countries. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so they're going after Activision, Electronic Arts, Riot Games, Nintendo, Konami, Valve, Ubisoft, Tencent, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Sony. All have been cited in lawsuits for having loot boxes. I think and... gaming companies are starting to realize this now because a lot of new releases don't have loot boxes now. At, well, at least as predatory. No. Where you, you can't... Well, I still think fucking... Um, I think FIFA's the worst leagues. one. Oh, it's always been the worst. Well, yeah. It's, it's, that and the, the Sims. Um, I mean, Rocket League's got rid of their loot boxes now. Yeah, but they fucking made it so you have to buy all the blueprints that you work, and there's no way of unlocking. True, but they've now actually got a trading system, so you can now trade in all the crappy blueprints and get better blueprints. Yeah, but it would still be worth it if you could actually buy or be able to play in-game and earn a way to unlock the blueprints that you've made. Yeah, maybe, but you know, it's a free game now. They've got to make money somewhere. Mm. Oh, well. But yeah, Brazil, on the good side. Yeah, Let's get go. rid of loot boxes. Ban them. I, I, Hopefully everyone else will start. I don't know how many other games I can think of now have a big one with loot boxes. Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> big controversy with Star Wars Battlefront 2. They yeah. Took them out. COD has had loot boxes in the past. They've got rid of theirs and they've got rid of theirs now. Yeah, but they still have like similar things, don't they? No, no, it's all gone now. It's all Battle Pass. They, they've made everything same, same kind of method as Fortnite now and those kind of games. Yeah, but I think those also... For... You, can, you can pay for bundles and stuff, but there's no loot boxes as such. There's no, like, gambling or random. Yeah. Which, which this, is, this the, is the problem with loot boxes. It's not with paying for it. It's like the fact it's a gamble. It's a... Also, it's the ones where they make it pay to win because all the good stuff is behind the bundle. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, companies are... Games are getting rid of that now, and anything that are kind of... You can still pay to win technically because you can unlock things faster, but yeah. in terms of Codway, you can just earn it anyway for yourself anyway. But yeah, uh, and then speaking of EA and loot boxes, EA has patented an adaptive difficulty system that adjusts to keep you playing longer. That's cool. I like that. So if you suck at video games, it will automatically lower the difficulty so you don't have to fucking suck anymore. I think that's a cool idea. I, I mean, it's good, but the ramifications are also predatory because it's trying to make you stay on for longer so that you'll buy more stuff. Is oh, I, I suppose actually, I think what is EA? Yeah, it's bad it's, as EA. It's, <laughs> yeah, I think someone else has done something similar, but I don't know if this would like might be the same sort of thing. But it will be, yeah. It's 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 basically going to be if you suck, it will slowly lower the difficulty so that you don't get frustrated and leave the game. But it, you won't notice. No, it's just I think it's gradual progression. Every time you fail, it goes slightly easier. Yeah, so there might be less enemies suddenly spawning, or or be suddenly, I think games it'd be like yeah, gradual. I think games do do this. I think there are some examples of games that have this sort of system built in. Yeah, I can't remember yeah, at the top. Like that. But there are ones where like if you because I think game developers know that if you get frustrated with the game, you'll put it down and you won't come back mm. until ages later and they want you to play the game. So I think game developers have implemented systems like this where they lower the difficulty slightly. Or even if you're playing like a game that's notoriously hard, they'll increase the difficulty if you're going through it too quickly. Yeah, because so, they, they want you to complete it in this amount of time. Yeah, to justify. But yeah, this is always going to be an interesting thing. I don't know how I trust EA with it, but... I don't trust hopefully. EA with it, but it's a cool software. Anyway, let's mm. go on. That's it for gaming news, I think. So let's go mm. on to Tech Time and Science Shenanigans. Yeah, we've added another bit to the headline because sometimes we talk about science stuff. Um, we do. But we can start off with tech news. And the first one is LG have left the smartphone market. Yeah, so basically due to increased competition rising costs of manufacturing, all number of things. LG has basically gone, well, look, our phones aren't selling as well, even though they're pretty good comparatively to everyone else's, but we don't have 
the recognition of everyone else. We're known for our TVs, not for our phones. Yeah, I think it's a smart business decision, really. I don't think they're going to make that much money from it, and they could make way more money from TVs and stuff. I wonder if they're going to stop doing phone components, though. Because mm, I doubt it, because they, they can make some profit off that. They still make smartphone screens, I imagine. Yeah, but they're probably just going to stop making phones I mean, with the LG have you ever brand. considered buying an LG phone? Uh, that f- one with the flippy, twisty Yeah, they look cool, but I was like, eh, maybe not. Yeah, I was never going to buy it. <laughs> <That laughs> it looks so dumb to me. I mean, the smartphone market is so cutthroat, it's the only... There's only five now, really. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I I I liked LG. LG was always good. They were innovative and they they made some interesting designs. But unfortunately, no unless it's a slab, there's a side anymore. A slab or a folding slab? That's not true. a sliding, uh, twisty folding slab. slabs aren't there yet, really. They're still not selling well. Yep. Um. And then moving on to innovations in areas, uh, Casio has announced that the first Wear OS smartphone in its iconic G-Shock lineup is coming out. Hmm. And I am buying this watch. Really? Because I, yep, it's fucking five hundred pound though, and I'm worried about that. But I, I have had a G-Shock for about nine years now, the same one, and it is the best watch I have ever had. And I want to upgrade if that one slowly starts to die, because it's got a load of scratches on it. It's slowly, it's really battered up. And this one will be the I, like I hate smartwatches. I think smartwatches are dumb. But this one would is the one that I would actually consider buying. I mean, because I think all right, <laughs> smartwatches are too smartwatches are too fragile to me. Like you, you think of how much time you s- slightly bash your wrist against of something, or, or it scratches, or like I work in engineering, so I'm constantly doing stuff where I true. I'm I mean, if you're doing that kind scrape, of job, then like I I can't really wear a smartwatch if I wanted one because it would just get scratched to hell, and they're fucking expensive anyway. But I suppose you've got a G-Shock so, one that's not going to break. But this has also adaptable features, so you can change its setting, so it'll last for a month. If you don't want any of the fancy shit, so you can just have it. So it only it it, it basic. I know a lot of smartwatches do this, but it would just go um black and white, and then you'll just have the display, and it would just last a month on battery. Or if you want any of the smart features, where you have like maps or music or heart rate or anything like that, it will slowly drain the battery a bit more. But I'm looking forward to this, and I might buy it at some stage when I have the yeah. spare cash. Five hundred ninety nine pounds. Yeah, or six hundred ninety nine dollars. Yeah. It's expensive. I'll, I I I generally know that, but it hopefully will last as long as my current watch. Maybe and, never know. And it's a G-Shock, and they're basically indestructible. I've thrown mine out of a window like multiple times on a uh, hotel balcony. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing that for? Because I had it off, and I knocked it, and it fell off a balcony on a f- fucking hotel, and it just crashed on the floor, and it was fine. Well, like, of course nothing it is. Bro- it's, a, it's like a solid bit of rubber. It, yeah. And that's why I want in a smartwatch. I don't want these fucking flimsy ass fucking st- wish straps that break every time you take them off. I want fucking something solid that will last me years. All right, fair, fair enough, fair enough. And so maybe at some stage when it releases, I might buy this. But I don't have six hundred pound. That's, that's quite a lot of money. Quite a bit. Yeah, I might buy it when it's cheaper. Well, talk about money. YouTube are now saying videos of moderate, moderate profanity and drug content can now be monetized. Yeah, so YouTube's sort of relaxing its policies on, like, swearing. Uh, I mean, it was a bit much, really. Yes, so basically I think it was rumoured that you can't say any swear words within the first 30 seconds of your video, uh, and that would make your video demonetized, so people were, like, censoring their videos for, like, the first 30 seconds if they did swear. And, yeah, and now you can use the middle finger and all that. And I think it's just better. Well, cause... I've never understood why swearing, like, light swearing was bad anyway. Because it's like, well, it's part of life. Yeah, it's kids, Dan. you got to think of the kids. But YouTube isn't for yeah, kids. You, because... you can, you can check, <laughs> check if your book is kid-friendly or not kid-friendly. Yeah, but it's also advertisers don't understand. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a complicated thing. And I think YouTube went a bit... Because they had loads of public problems with uh, ads. And then they lost a load of ads. And then they had to kind of win back the favor of the advertisers. So... They kind of went, look, we're going to censor everything. We're going to go full hard. We're not going to fucking let anything slip. We're going to fucking... Even if you haven't got profanity in your video, we're going to still fucking demonetize you because fuck you, we need your money. Yeah. And then and then they just kind of went, oh, shit, people don't like that. Oh, now no. we've got to kind of roll back. Oh. And then, yeah, I don't have ads on YouTube because I pay for the premium because fuck ads. That's stupid. Yeah, but they still demonetize your 
uh, viewers. Yeah, and also content. it highly limits the amount of people who can actually watch it when you do get demonetized. Yeah. Because they basically hide the video like from people's inboxes and stuff, and it's, it's not just stupid. But it's a bit too late, but Intel has launched its anti- anti-toxicity voice chat AI, um, and it's in beta at the moment. But basically, this is an anti-chat filter, and it's got sliding, sliding little things for profanity. Well, so you can limit you, so it's the dumbest fucking thing because you can slide whether or not you want some racism or <laughs> some some sexism. That's but it, ra- rather than being just a hard stance, you can have I want some uh, alt right theory. I want some. I want a lot of um, profanity. I want a lot of racism. There's the N word switch. Uh, the only one that has a switch is the N word. You can have I want the N word or I don't want the N word. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> it it's presented so poorly. Uh but it it's like an anti swearing filter. So if you're in a game and you don't want someone swearing in your chat or whatever, it will just auto mute the person or like replace it, I think is the point. It it, will just if you get offended mute. by those kind of things, it's like, oh they 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 said something mildly profanity oh terrible or something well it's it's more targeted at like harassment so it's like i know if I know, someone but... if if you're if you are black and someone is just saying the n-word to you constantly it's kind of not great um and apparently 22 percent of uh gamers quit games because of harassment which is rocket a statement. league for example no rocket league just people cancel because you're better than them no but also because people are <laughs> they are like really toxic and you go what a save and you just like you just miss a save it's like well thanks yeah but um, it's got LGB hate, uh, LGBTQ hate filters. So the um filters are none, some, most, all. So you can set it so you can have all. This seems really all. insane, but if yeah. like it works, <laughs> it's a way to fix the far left and the far right together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just gonna be an echo chamber. Like you, you think of you have a set to all, so you can hear everything, and then you go, I don't want to hear like this person's viewpoint and then i'll just mute them and then there's no like back and forth i get it it's meant to be like but it's so poorly presented in how it's shown yeah I think, like, I think it's a good idea but they just <laughs> did it a bad way they shouldn't have done sliders just have it on an off switch like yeah it's be like N-word. show profanity or not not show profanity or something like that because someone who is worried about swearing is also worried about everything else and doesn't care what word is bad they just don't like any swear words yeah so having it also i want to know what the fucking filters are because what what qualifies as some profanity and what qualifies as most profanity or it's what like, qualifies it's as... like there's like mild and harsh words don't know if you think about it it's like the seven that's like a lot worse yeah. than other ones but what what do they deem that'd worse? be interesting to see we have to wait c- like i imagine cunt's probably high up there or bitch or fag yeah, nips. I didn't want to say the word. <laughs> oh, if you go on, because uh, I played Rocket League the other day. If you say bastard, it's not blurred out. But if you say your mum, it is. No, which I but... think is quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a strange time to be like a gamer if you wanted. But it might be useful. It might not be. I think you can download the beta if you want to try it out at some stage in the future. Maybe you're sensitive to the ears. You should not be listening to this podcast if you are. No, I mean, we're on the explicit, so, you know, technically. Also, I think I've spawned like 15 times in the last minute. <laughs> true, 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 true. Uh, but with more sad news comes sad news. It's so sad. Yah- Yahoo Answers will shut down forever on May 4th. Yahoo Answers, one of the, the funniest places on the internet where people can ask, how many years are in a leap year? Uh, and am I pragnagonant? <laughs> <laughs> because it's just... Co- There's a video of um everyone who can't pre- like, spell pregnant because these people should not be pregnant. Uh, <laughs> um, am I the mother the f- of my child? Yep. Uh, h- horrendous answer- questions and answers. But this was before like Google was like a thing. And this was how the internet spoke to each other yeah people were answering that question it's like how do you not know yeah they're so sad but, there's so many memes come out of that thing but yeah well it's not making them any money because you have google now and yahoo basically squandered it is, uh, is ask jeeves still around i think so somehow because that that was the thing that i i knew people used i never used any of these sites i just see all the pictures of like yahoo answers and it's like can you get pragnagonant or pregnant or pregnant 
or Prignant. <laughs> it's just, it's the funniest video on the internet if you ever want to watch it. It's um just I have this seen guy. It, yeah. it's, it's funny. Yeah, just this guy going around reading all the fucking mis- spelling mistakes or questions that are about pregnancy. It's great. Well, speaking of great, <laughs> yeah. So a tiny particle is defying the laws of physics. Yeah, I don't understand this. I'm not a scientist, um, but apparently, some, I imagine some... it's going to be a fundamental particle they've just discovered. Um, people think it might be related to dark energy, which has been a thing for a while in the second. But believe it or not, it could be a mysterious force behind the universe. Yeah, called dark uh, energy, so... which seems very sci-fi, but actually could be true. So they are studying the physics of muon particle in their muon. muon G2 experiment that seems to break our current models of physics. At least the extended physics beyond the standard model follow in, in, followed in virtually everything here on Earth. Uh, that... <coughs> oh, fuck me. COVID. Oh, no. Uh, Get tested. The current model of physics force felt on the Earth, which are gravity, electromagnetisms, the strong force and the weak force, are not necessarily being followed in an experiment on the spatial muon particle. This provides strong evidence for the existence of an undiscovered subatomic particle or new force, the UK Scientists and Technology Facility Council said. It's very interesting that there could actually be a force. From Star Wars mm. in the actual universe. And then we'll soon be able to harness that and everyone will have lightsabers and the world will Yeah, be I think that could be <laughs> slightly extreme. Um, forms of matter and energy that are not yet known to science. So basically they have no fucking clue what's going on. Absolutely. But... Like science, scientists know pretty much very little behind this universe. Yep, but as humans, they have, we they have come determined... to the conclusion that there's, kind of, there's a mysterious force for the universe expanding. So it's pretty good common knowledge that the universe is expanding, but they don't know how it keeps expanding. God, Dan. Yes. It's God. All answers are God. Like, don't look for answers. Just make up the answer. <laughs> Sorry to anyone who's religious. I don't... I, if, if it makes you happy, go for it. I mean, but... at the end of the day, religion could just be science. That's unexplained. Yep. And the by saying there's a mysterious force, it could be a God creating that force. You don't know. No, we don't. Um, but yeah, from one dystopian future of we don't understand science to another, people are... F- Frightened of a dystopian gadget that counts people in your home to change your uh to charge you more. So basically, Dan, if you ever wanted to watch movies in your house when you have friends around, yeah, and rather than paying one price for one purchase of the movie, you have to pay for every single one of your friends. That would be to awful. Watch it. <laughs> yeah. So this new streaming device, which will give you access to the latest blockbuster movies in your home has a little sensor that will track how many people are in the room and charge you more if more people come in and watch the film. This is really creepy, and I don't like it. This is the equivalent of a TV license. This is what Xbox was trying to do with um, the Kinect, is continuously monitor people. But um... The worst part is, <laughs> it... this gives the nut jobs a reason to be scared. Yeah, but um, if you if you have... Like, it, and also, it will change depending on if someone walks into the room. So if someone walks into the room and you've already purchased it, it will charge you more when that person walks into the room. So and and it will continuously monitor you throughout the entire movie to see if people come and go and charge you based on that. I suppose the only benefit maybe it's cheaper to have it for any one of you. No, because it's paying. F- I, I mean, maybe, but so if there's only you I don't watching f- it, maybe they charge you less. I, I still don't want a camera watching me watch a movie. Yeah, same. It seems so creepy. I'd rather just pay the pay the set fee. <laughs> Like, I'd rather have a random stranger at a cinema watch me than the fucking yeah. NA, like, a camera <laughs> that so I creepy. have no... Like, I, 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 Jim down, the, down the, the aisle was just staring at you watching the film. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just such a strange concept to me that I have no idea why anyone thought this would work. Like, people are paranoid of monitoring anyway, and this is not going to help that. No, definitely not. Also, it just seems expensive, because if your mates just walk into the room, you get charged. I think it's meant to do a calculation depending on how long the person's in the room for to determine how much they charge you for that person. It seems way too stupid. Yeah, no one's ever going to do it. No, no, no one will. If you actually opt to do this, you're insane. But Dan, you'll get to watch Black Widow at your home without Disney Plus because... I took a cinema. The cinema should be open at that point or it could be a drive-in <laughs> cinema. Yeah, but Dan, I could watch it at home with a camera on me. And I could watch no. Black Widow. Or <laughs> I could just sign up for Disney Plus and watch it on Disney Plus and yeah. not have a camera look at me. It's, it's insane. Well, do you um, remember last week we covered the uh, Razer RGB mask? Yes. Well, w- Will I Am and Honeywell are to make another fa- face mask. Yeah. Um, it's $299. Yeah. Um, um, 
It's also got and, um, headphones in it as well. Yeah, which is why it's two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Yeah, because <laughs> if you took away, uh, someone was saying if you take, because it's the thing that if those break, then you've got a mask that's pointless because you're just gonna have those earphones dangle down your head. Do you think masks are actually gonna become normal now, part of life? I think what they should have done when they first did it was make it a fashion statement to have a mask. Yeah, because I mean they, they, they did try that actually. Yeah, but they had shit masks. It was just like fabric. There's, yeah, there was yeah. no techno. There was no fancy technology that made it a, like a, a a desirable thing. Well, and also they're now... gonna do um they're gonna do supreme style drops of these apparently. Oh wow! So so it will be limited time, and you'll only be able to get it once. Um, but it does look quite cool. Yeah, I mean, I do like. It's got nice stars. It looks things. nicer than uh, it looks nicer than the um razor one. Oh, razor one is insane. It's, it's so bad. Yeah, this one looks like more of a mask, but I don't like the headphone inclusion. Because one, it makes it more expensive because Bluetooth headphones are... And these have noise cancelling and everything. But I already own noise cancelling headphones and earphones. They've also got a, a built-in HEPA filter as well. Yeah. But I still think if the... Like, is there a way to detach the earphones without... If they break? Um, without having I don't to think get rid so. Of the, yeah. That's my point. If the headphones break and they're like on a little dangly piece of string. And I'm just like... Right, so if these break, I'm just going to have these permanently here forever. Yeah, I, I mean, you look fixed. like an idiot. Oh, no, you look fine. Yeah. It's just, you feel like an idiot because it won't work. Yeah, but I mean, that's my only reasoning behind it. It's just like, well, I don't need the Bluetooth headphones. You could have tro- knocked off like 150 quid and then I might have bought it. But it's $300 and I'm just like, no, if I want a stupid mask, I'll buy razors because that might, that will still probably be like, a couple hundred, but it might not be because they don't have Bluetooth speakers in it. No, that's true. Well, we do like to cover Boston Dynamics on this podcast, and it's in the news again. The French army is testing the Boston Dynamics robot dog spot in a combat situa- situations. The rise of the machines is coming. <laughs> it's actually it's actually starting robot warfare. Yep, militaries are using it. <laughs> Drones are mean... now a really big thing in our in wars. Wars will be fought with robots. Yep, and I love it. No, I hate it. It's it's dumb. It, it's the start I, of the end. I think what they should do is tie gaming into it and have gamers have real life war and effects. That seems like a really bad idea. Small children can get control of an AR-15 on a robot dog and go down, mow down some robots. Yeah, I mean, this poor robot It's going to be shot yeah. out in pieces. It's the entire reason behind its existence. As much as Google likes to claim it's not, it's the entire purpose. Yeah, 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 yes, it is. <laughs> it's it's to transport cargo so that they don't have to have vehicles. Is its entire purpose. But you, as we saw previously, you can strap a paintball gun to it and use it as a <laughs> fucking. It <laughs> <laughs> brings a whole new uh, meaning to paintballing. You just take your robot dog with you. <laughs> Yeah, imagine them using the uh, beanbag guns. Oh my god! On on a robot, just a robot dog charging you down with beanbags, just fucking hitting you in the face. Scary, scary world we live in now. Yeah, that that's all we have to say. It's it's a terrifying prospect, and it, it's okay. Yeah, moving on to stupid things, but that sounds stupid, but aren't stupid. Yeah, and so Microsoft is dunking servers into boiling liquid to keep them cool, which sounds yeah. insane. When you until you realize that it's only water that boils at high temperatures and other stuff, but this is a liquid that is has a lower boiling point than water, so it is technically freezing, but it's boiling at the same time. Yeah, so it makes it so really cold. Is, <laughs> also, it's it's also water that is electric. This isn't electrically like this doesn't absorb like have an electric current flow through it. No, so no, no, don't, no. You won't fry anything by having an electric current go through it. Um, so yeah, this is just, this is how they're going to probably cool their, uh, servers from now on in, in an experiment. Cause it's just like, Hey, why not have this? Cause it seems to work quite effectively. Well, the colder you can have something, the more faster it'll run. Hmm. Uh, you, you know more about this stuff than I do. Yeah. I mean, like, well, it's a cooling is the biggest thing about any electronics, uh, thermal throttling, which I'm sure most people have heard about can be caused by overheating. Uh, thermal throttling is when the computer will stop itself from getting hotter so it won't me- melt any of the components. Mm. Uh, it's a very so natural I part. Think... It's in phones a lot, thermal throttling. And it, it happens in servers as well. It's a very tight environment, a lot of heat. A lot of ca- yeah, a lot of cables all wrapped around each other. Yeah, and just well, dunking it in a liquid will help with the heat, heat dissipation, really. 
but you can't just dunk it in any liquid. No, no, definitely <laughs> not. Um, water, water isn't actually that bad itself by pure water, but it can be ionized quite easily. Uh, since it gets ionized, it's conductive. Yeah. And at that point, it's it, it bad. <laughs> you put your hand there, you're good. Yeah, yeah. You, pure water's fine once it's excess, but it won't be pure for long. But yeah, this is just an experiment because that no one knows if this is actually going to be any good. It just seems to work. It's a good idea. So, if it, I mean, yeah, if it does work, it'd be the future, and Microsoft's cloud streaming service will take off. So the liquid uh, boils at just 122 Fahrenheit or 50 C, compared to water, which has a boiling point of 212 Fahrenheit or 100 C. So, due to the low boiling point, fluid in the coils is never hotter than the surrounding air, negating the need to douse them in water to assist the evaporation in essentially a closed-loop cooling system. Ah, that's fair enough. It works. Hmm. Um, why, why wouldn't it? Yeah. But speaking of servers and uh, working, or in this case, not working, uh, Facebook had a data breach of 500 million users. Which is incredible and, amount of people. And the biggest takeaway was the the mobile numbers of those 500 million people got leaked. Scam callers, so, people. They're going to be calling you up soon. Yep. So the Facebook IDs, email addresses, phone numbers, uh, and much, much more has been leaked on. And you think, oh, five million, 500 million, a lot of people. And then you go and compare it to like how many people are on Facebook, which is, I think, like 2 billion at this point. It's a quarter. And you think, yeah, you think, oh, it's not that big. And then you go, oh, fuck, yeah, no, it's big. Yeah, it's like one in four people. Uh, it's likely that me or you had a yeah. hacked. Yeah, the only thing I'm worried about is my phone number not re- and my email. Yeah. Uh, like, I, 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 I deleted everything <laughs> off of Facebook ages ago. It's I just have Messenger no I use, but it's like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is very bad for Facebook after the Cambridge Analytica scandal where more data was stolen from people. And also, this looks like Facebook tried to hide it as they well. They always try to hide it. Well, also, because after the Cambridge Analytica thing, they had they had to, um, with the EU and stuff, they had to make an agreement that they had to tell people after like a certain amount of days, mm. and they haven't. Um, and I think if it comes out after a certain date, once they ma- they signed a thing, you might be entitled to money once all of this com- comes and finds out what happened. Oh, yes. Give me money. How much is it? Like, talking like two quid? Well, be like they'll have to pay a settlement, and then that settlement will be split across five hundred million people. So you'll get very little because I doubt they'll oh, charge them it's that like much. Two billion of five hundred million people. How many is that? Which is that? It's like what four quid? Yeah, and I mean, who knows? But yeah, if you have a Facebook account, you're probably affected by this. Yeah, like some st- unfortunately. So if you, there are websites out there that will determine if your data has been sold to black market dealerships. I think. Have you been pwned is a good one for your email. I think the governments have set up a phone number checker. So you can check what phone number, if your phone number has been sold, like your data for that. And yeah, it generally sucks. I think Facebook is a terrible company and they need to not have. I recently watched a video on the like button and how that changed humanity for the worst. Well, luckily, uh, my email has not been affected. Yeah, I had a bunch of email breaches recently, so I don't know if that was because of it. Because uh, one of them was a Facebook Farmville, g- uh, like a game by like Zynga, which is like a Facebook developer for mobile like games on Facebook. Yeah, and I'd never fucking heard of it, and I don't know how they had my email. Well, apparently my uh, phone number, ha- my phone number has not been pwned, but I know it has because apparently I had a phone call, well, a message from someone saying I had a missed call from you when I didn't call them, and someone's mm. got my phone number. But yeah, this is probably a lot worse for old people because oh, yeah. they're, they're easily susceptible because people can gleam a lot of data off Facebook and then know a lot about a person. And whilst young people are kind of savvy to that, old people are very trusting for some reason. And if they know stuff, they'll be like, okay, yeah, that's fine. But yeah, bad, bad Facebook. And bad. then let's just go to our final topic, a weird, wacky, wonderful world. And we have only one thing. And Marvel has released a one hour footage of Zemo dancing. Yep, so like Zack Snyder's Justice League cut, fan, there was rumours of a 30-second extended edition of the Zemo dance sequence in the last episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and the fa- fans demanded it. And so <laughs> Marvel went, fuck it, we'll do it. It's 30 seconds, and then we'll just loop it for an hour. Yep, <laughs> okay, great, good old Marvel. <laughs> and it's great. Yeah, he does some little clapping, he does some little boogieing a bit more, he does some <laughs> so finger <good>. wagging. <laughs> Uh, he's just a classic white guy at a club. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Dad dancing. Awkward, awkward, awkward dancing. 
Um, and I like the music and a lot of the visuals, but I won't watch an hour of this. No. Well, that sums up our TFE podcast for this week. Go check out last week's TBL and te- check out our YouTube channel for our weekly Falcon and Winter Soldier series. Yeah, um, and more links in the description. Yeah, everything's in the description. Go yep. have a look. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.